Thank you for staying with us. With transportation being one of the major challenges affecting many Nigerians in the country, the federal government has agreed to allocate the sum of 100 billion naira for high-capacity CNG, that's compressed natural gas buses, to support the transport industry and ease the sting of the petrol subsidy. This was part of agreements reached between the federal government and labor unions to avert the indefinite strike slated to have commenced on the 3rd of October. And the decision also includes the distribution of 55,000 CNG conversion kits to launch an auto gas conversion initiative while waiting for the ongoing construction of advanced CNG stations across the country. Well, joining us via Zoom is economist and public policy consultant, Mayokun Ilo. Mayokun, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, very good morning to you. How do you do today? Very Thank well. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Now, let's look at this matter of uh, the CNG buses. Uh, there are those who have commended uh, the president and the government for looking in this direction. And uh, the government, in its agreements with uh, the NLC, or Organized Labor, says uh, this will commence or should commence in November uh, with a test run in some campuses. And uh, those have started generating reactions. And I want to get your reactions quickly, your reaction rather to, to this. Although the, the Senate is coming out to say that um, uh, it's rejecting uh, CBN's loans with regards to this matter of uh, the CNG buses, the money needed to procure these buses, saying that uh, the government, the president should understand that uh, there is no room for extra spending, so to speak. So it does help us situate all of these issues as you give us your perception of uh, this matter of the CNG buses. Well, uh, to every sane mind, looking at uh, the pros and cons of uh, energy industry in Nigeria, I think it's a very good step in the right direction. Uh, that That is the, the summation of it, because uh, uh, CNG-powered vehicles are more efficient, they are cleaner, they are better for the environment, and they are even cheaper. So it's like having your cake and eating it at the same time. So uh, I think the government is trying. What I can only say is that there should be a speeding up of uh, the adoption process. Uh, it's good we are starting with about 55,000 kids or there about, but we, we, what we are looking for is, is in the millions. Uh, those countries that are, uh, that are the leading ones in terms of uh, using uh, CNG-powered vehicles are China, Iraq, uh, India, Iran, and the rest of them. They are all uh, not developed. They are developing economies. So Nigeria should join them, uh, reduce the cost of uh, fuel as, as, as we know it, and uh, make everything better off. As far as the Senate uh, is concerned, it's their duty to do oversight. I'm sure they can find uh, a way to work it within them, between the presidency, CBN, and uh, and the legislature, so that they will find a way to, to take the money. Yeah, I, th I still think uh, this needs to be subsidized, at least for adoption. The, the cost of uh, doing a vehicle is in the hundreds of thousands of Naira at the moment. So, but there might be economies of scale if we bring it in in the hundreds of thousand kits, for instance. So the cost can come as low as 50,000 if uh, there are enough people uh, who are going to adopt it. And uh, even if the need is there, you can always make uh, some sub available for people so that within the next one year, within the next six months, they can pay off the cost of the conversion kit. And before you know it, everybody is happy, both the user and the government and uh, even the industry. The president is also optimistic and has shared uh, his optimism about uh, the fact that this CNG buses, once uh, brought in, it will help in training, it would also uh, improve employment opportunities for Nigerians. What do you make of um, you know, this when it does happen and how opt optimistic are you also? Uh, you know, I, I understand where the president is coming from. He's talking about the value chain of the industry. When you invest 100 billion, it's not going into one person's pocket. If a portion of that money will go into buying those vehicles, for instance, a portion may be going into training the people who are going to be working along the value chain. The people who are going to doing the conversion kit, I won't be the one anyway. If my car is going to be done, I have to take it to a station where some people are already working or are going to be trained on how to work. Some people will invest once they see that there's a market in that. 
So that 100 billion in the next six months can turn to 1 trillion naira as the private sector comes in and sees the market and uh, demand that they can lap onto and uh, make better for everybody. So it, it's, it's really a, a good initiative. Uh, I think my thing, which is the CNG that we are talking about, is about the cleanest fuel that anybody can get. And it's cheaper. And, uh, you know, most of the journey we take is not for long distance. We should have make it uh, maybe the only disadvantage for it. But if you are working in Lagos or coming from Ubuntu Lagos to work, you can always run on CNG buses because there will always be one station or the other that you can always refuel as the need arises. So the demand for normal uh, petrol fuel, we, we kind of go down, maybe by as much as 50% in the coming years. Uh, I've not run the numbers, but I know that this, these are the, the things. i give you an example. In US now, Tesla brought a model of vehicle, how this electric vehicle. Because everybody is now talking sustainability, the government said, okay, if you are going to be buying this electric vehicle and helping us in our sustainability initiatives, carbon zero and the rest of it, we will give you 7,000 rebates you know, that means government is paying part of the money of your vehicle for you. It's not because they like you or because they are doing for that person, but they have done the numbers and run their projections. That okay, in the next 10 years, this will be an advantage to government because we are trying to reduce our carbon footprints in the world. Everybody is talking about 1.5 uh, degrees of energy going up and stuff like that, the temperature. And uh, it's a risk, a clear and present danger for everybody. So the whole world is in a concerted effort. You'll be hearing the word sustainability and the rest of it now banded around, around the world because everybody is in this together. Uh, that the fact that we're in Nigeria, we are developing the economy, does not mean we are immune from, from the problems of climate change. You've heard about the rain, you've heard about the, the storms and all the things that uh, NIMET and the rest of them have been talking about recently. So we should jointly support the government in this drive, uh, take the initiatives. NLC and TUC should ask for more if they need to, but their intentions should be born out of a desire for national service and patriotism not partisan politicking. That's my thought. Right. So there's the aspect of the government is saying this is an immediate um, measure to addressing this matter of uh, fuel subsidy removal, but that uh, there's no structure in place uh, with regards to stations where vehicles, these vehicles, the gas-powered vehicles, will be getting the gas. Uh, there are no stations where this person's for conversions already put in place if government is saying this is to begin in November. And so there are those who are not seeing how realistic this is going to be at the end of the day. In fact, there are those who are also saying maybe the government should just go ahead and buy buses that are already uh, converted to, buy, to CNG uh, powered buses as against we looking to convert them in the country because there are no capable hands to actually carrying out these conversions. Well, uh, in the theory of innovation, there are early adopters, there are late adopters, and there are the mainstream people. The, the news here is not about the government buying buses. The news is about the government is kickstarting the process of uh, wide adoption. You know, government is a large player in any industry. So what they are trying to do is, okay, see what we have brought. See that the vehicles are reliable. Can you see that this thing is working? Now, can you bring your vehicles and we give you some subsidies so that you also will see the benefits that everybody is enjoying. So it's not really about uh, the 3,000 buses. Uh, if you look at the blue buses and red buses that we have in Lagos there, uh, you find out that they are, maybe they are in the hundreds or in, even in the thousands. So uh, giving uh, maybe 100 per state is really a, a drop in the ocean for Lagos. So I want to believe that Lagos State Government will also now sit down and say, okay, since federal government is giving us 100, can we go with 500 of our own since we have the resources to do it? And at the end of the day, everybody, everything works. We should not believe that everything depends on, on rest solely with the federal government. Government can kickstart processes but what they are looking for is adoption. What they are looking for is private sector participation and collaboration mm. so that all these things work for us. It's not just about the money now. It's not about the people. It's also about the profit and the planet so that the world we are living in will be better off. People can at least have, have a, a way of, of breeding. Like has been said, let the poor breed. So this is one way of making the poor breed by making transportation available to them. It's a form of subsidy, at least at the earliest start, so that at least people will not be in the position it's okay. Even my small car of uh, maybe 2.5 million, how much do I need to convert it to, to this? If you see your neighbor doing it on the right and on the left, there's a high chance that you also will be inclined to say, okay, let me try this CNG. I hope it's safe. They say it's safe. Six months later, instead of spending maybe 100,000 on fuel, you only spent 40,000. 
then nobody needs to tell you before you start becoming an apostle of uh, conversion to CNG vehicles. How about the matter of infrastructure in place needed ahead of uh, this, the arrival of the buses? Well, um, most times uh, there are cynics, there are critics. They don't see what government is doing. But I know it's been like three months that government has been talking about now. All the nuts and bolts of uh, the infrastructure are being put in place at the back end. We don't see it, you know. Uh, most people will always keep talking. They say it's, it can't be done until it's done. Suddenly, we now hear that, okay, these five places have been, their are mother stations, as they call them, where, you know, off-takers will come and get conversion kits. The 55,000 will not be domiciled in the state. Maybe it's on the sea, as I'm talking to you. Maybe it's in a way or somewhere in a papa. Before you know it, it's cutting across all the state. That is the function of government. That's why we have bureaucracy, which is the uh, ministries all, all across the state. So everybody that needs to be doing something, I'm sure they're already doing something, as long as the funding is there. One government talks about, okay, allocation of resources. These are the things that they are talking about. So you just wake up one day and say, okay, the first uh, 100 vehicles have been done. It's like a COVID shot. You know, all you need to do is to watch TV and they say, ah, this was the first person that took the COVID shot in the world. Then the next person that took it in, in Nigeria and the rest of it. So uh, since government has said in November, November is just a month mm -hmm. away. We should just be patient. And uh, even if it fails by a day or two, that doesn't mean that the government is not sincere. I'm sure at the end of the day, you know, down the line, everybody will benefit. It started like that with GSM. If you remember how we used to struggle with telephone, but now every time the canary has a phone, even two, three lines at the same time now. You, you spoke earlier about, um, you know, the government also intending some form of uh, privatization of, of, of this project. And already we are seeing bodies like the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria suggesting that um, the president or those that will drive this initiative should utilize uh, local manufacturers. Even Ipman is also speaking now, uh, urging the uh, the president to utilize or urging the administration to utilize private depot owners because they are making a case for themselves that they have the capacity they have the manpower you know what what do you make of um this this interest and um in terms of workability and indeed this issue of capacity what do you think well i i think they are what they are saying is is right is they are right within the government space somebody said politics is the art of who gets what when and how so if they play their politics right they will get a a piece of of the pie as it were but even outside uh, government telling you what, what to do or giving you some allocations, uh, the entrepreneurial people in any industry, my people in uh, Ladipo and the rest of them, you'll be surprised that they're already making moves. Mm -hmm. Everybody should not be waiting for government. Make your move independent of government, but make sure you are aligned with government policies as it were. So manufacturing association, even as they are talking within a group for their members, you'll be surprised that some of those members, the younger ones, because sometimes innovation comes from the fringes, some younger ones are already making moves. I've seen some guys in, uh, in Lagos, in Alaba, and the rest of them who are already going to where they can import. And the moment they start to import, there's uh, what you call uh, forward and backward integration in, uh, in business and economics. They will be integrated. It's, it takes an average Jibo man who is in this industry to see what has been done. Okay, these are like 10 parts. Which of these parts can we source locally? Give them six months, they will start to manufacture this thing locally. They don't, they don't need government to push them. But what government should do is to make sure that they regulate standards so that at the end of the day, it's not like you buy the Nigeria made uh, cylinder for CNG and after three months, the team bust and somebody is dead. So we don't want that kind of story. Let there be regulation, but let there be standards and there should be promotion of local endeavors. And that speaks to earlier to what you were talking about, about uh, this thing cutting across value chains in the country, creating employment that the president is talking about. You can't see the whole uh, staircase when you are climbing. The moment you make a move, some forces of business, some forces of industry will align and make sure that they help you to, to reach where you are going. Look at ChatGPT, right. if I can try to annex. It's changing the world and everybody is benefiting. Uh, Michael, Michael, we need to quickly uh, go on a break. When we return, we'll continue this conversation with you. Do stay with us.
Thank you for staying with us. Uh, we've been talking about uh, the 100 uh, billion naira that uh, the government has said it is going to put in place for high capacity compressed natural gas buses to support the transport industry to, hit, to ease rather the sting of uh, petrol subsidy. And our guest uh, who have been speaking with us is an economist and public policy consultant, Mayokun Ilu. Marco, there's uh, this concern about implementation. There are those who are saying that um, a gas is not just going to be, it's not something that is used for only transportation alone, but we also know that it has domestic use as well, and that uh, government has to look at smartly executing this project. So I am wondering how you expect or what your impressions will be of how government should go about implementing this? Well, a uh, good thing that, uh, you know, they say Nigeria is a country endowed with uh, so much crude oil. The, the narrative is changing to saying that Nigeria is a gas endowed country with some oil. You understand? That tells you the volume of gas we have in reserves. Mm. So if there's a reason why we should not be afraid is because this is something God has blessed us with. Mm. We've been hearing from uh, pipeline businesses, pipeline transportation for gas across the country, even going as far as Europe. So it's, it's something that can be done. It's something that is doable. And uh, whether through cylinders or pipelines, gas can be compressed, gas can be sent to whoever needs it. So CNG is, is one of the best gases that we can use. Good thing it has uh, usage in different, whether in industrial or domestic settings and even for vehicular movement. So either way, it, it's a good thing, uh, but government will have to do its own part, which they are doing, I believe, anyway. Yeah. Although there's always movement. Make sure that the value chain is tight. Make sure that incidences and accidents are reduced. Accidents are reduced to, to, to the barest minimum within the industry, because those are the things that scare people away when they hear of gas cylinders, when they hear of uh, explosions and the rest of it. But if we are careful, Take care of the of the pennies and let the pounds take care of themselves. Regulations that are tight, that are industry driven, uh, best practices from all over the world, uh, policies that are aimed at sustainability and the remuneration maybe for those working within the industry. We, by the end of the day, ten years will be okay. It's not it's not rocket science. We are not the innovators in this space. Uh, there are countries like China, five point eight million vehicles run on. Uh, compressed natural gas, if you go to Iran, it's about 4 million. Go to Iraq, go to India. These are the countries where you have millions. So when you have 55,000, you just know that, okay, it's just a start. But every good thing, big things start come in small packages. So maybe we are starting small. And uh, I want to just be optimistic that in the next four or five years, we'll be talking of maybe cars in their millions running on CNG in Nigeria. And uh, the, the society, the planet, all being the better for it. What about um, the workability of uh, this CNG bus option? Uh, some concerns, uh, in addition to you know some people talking about you know the workability of it, is uh, it, it that it works in the south or it would work in the south more than it would work uh, in the northern parts of um, in the country. Where do you stand in in this argument, or or do you believe that this is something that should work across the country? Well, this should work across the country because what, what we see as North and South is just a geographical expression. Uh, climate doesn't know North and South, for instance. The, the whole area that we call Nigeria is less than a region, you know, one sim simple small region in Canada. So everything is relative. So the idea of North and South, unless they come with specific uh, uh, points, which I can cite one, because uh, CNG is not really made for CMG vehicles, may not really be made for long distance journeys because of the size of the cylinders. Mm -hmm. So either we go for maybe longer cylinders, bigger cylinders as it were, or we restrict our movement to maybe 50 kilometers at a point so that you can always recharge. If you are going from Lagos to maybe Kano, for instance, the vehicle with uh, fuel. You can maybe you can uh, top up your fuel like maybe two or three times before you get there with cylinders of uh, CNG. It might make you double that amount of time. So these are just the considerations. Other than that, anybody can use it as long as you are buying it close to your area. It's not like you come to Lagos with your 
with your Toyota Corolla and you want to now buy foil that you use in Kaduna, no. If you live within the Kaduna metropolis for your gas in, in your neighborhood and uh, it's as good as living in Lagos. All right, quickly, one question before we go. The matter of safety is another concern for, for a lot of persons. We know the number of incidents we have uh, witnessed as regards uh, the use of gas as a country. How safe, quickly, is uh, this matter of the use of CNG in vehicles? Well, uh, comparatively, CNG is a, is a safe uh, option for powering vehicles. Is denser because the thing is the C in uh, CNG is compressed and it makes it uh, less flammable. So that, that is not really a problem. But that said, the issue of valves because uh, it is the little things that cause big problems. The cylinder should be safe, the valves, the monitors, the regulators, and all those things. So that if uh, the thing is filled up, for instance, nobody should keep pumping gas until it causes an explosion. So all the equipment needs to be in top shape. That's why at the beginning we may opt for uh, importation. Why we we learn the ropes on how to produce in house. So at right. the end of the day, this industry, if the regulators are also doing their jobs. Mayoko Ilo, economist and public policy consultant, thank you for your time on the program. Thank you for having me. Right.